Welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast. Welcome to a live stream here on the podcast. Really, really exciting time. This is the League One end of season Q&A debate discussion. A really, really chill afternoon just talking everything League One. A really, really nice opportunity for me, really, just to uh, yeah, talk to everybody, have a really nice chat, get a really good uh, set of questions in, hopefully. It's a really, really good conversation. I really cannot wait for it. Lots of people already in the chat already, and that really, really does excite me. Afternoon to every single one of you, uh, and it's Sunderland AFC, with far the greatest team the world has ever seen. Well, we'll find out next Saturday, I have a feeling, uh, whether or not you'll be playing championship football next season. I've got Portsmouth fan in here as well. 2-0 to Sunderland at Wembley, got his ticket sorted, Mizu. Fair play to you, my friend Josh. Uh, I believe that's a Charlton fan. We've got a, uh, uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Nat says after uh, afternoon all, and uh, Charlie Webb says afternoon as well. Like I said, this is going to be a really, really interesting episode of the podcast, because I've got, uh, you know, we've done quite a few podcasts in recent weeks um but we haven't really had an opportunity to really sort of sit down um, and uh, discuss everything in a bit more detail. We're going to be talking about lots of things this afternoon. Um, and it's a really nice opportunity, uh, yeah, just to speak to a lot of the people. And also give, me, give a huge thank you to everybody that's subscribed over the recent uh, last few weeks, really. Because uh, like I said, we've done a lot of content, a lot of episodes. We haven't done any live streams. It's a really good opportunity for me to interact with you. And that really, really does excite me. So, this episode and live show is completely dictated by you. I need you to give your questions, your debates, your talking points in the comments down below. You've got a question, put it in that live chat, I'll be answering. Of course, we've got lots of different avenues we're going to go down anyway, lots of things, different talking points I want to discuss. However, I want to hear what you've got to say and I want to hear your questions and all that good stuff as well as so a hit. Um, Hit all of those questions, all of those thoughts in that live chat. If you watch this as an episode of the podcast, uh, and it might go up as a, it should go up as a normal episode if it if it goes well, and then give your thoughts in the comments down below as well. Because if I do another one of these like this again, then of course I can use some of those questions as well. Really, really exciting time. So what are we going to expect from today? Of course, other than the questions that hopefully you are going to be firing into this live chat, we'll be talking about the playoff final, of course, next Saturday between Sunderland and Wickham Wanderers. Of course, of course we're going to be looking at my thoughts on that, but I want to hear from you as well. Uh, I also uh, want to uh, be talking uh, about the su- surprise teams of the year as well. Of course, MK Dons, Plymouth, Cambridge, Cheltenham, all enjoying really, really exciting campaigns. I want to be talking about that. The manager, Merry Go Round at the moment. Of course, Charlton, they've sacked Johnny Jackson. Lots of controversy surrounding that. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be uh, really quite interesting. Uh, Fleetwood, of course, today have highlighted, uh, sorry, announced they'll be uh, appointing Scott Brown as their manager, of course, uh, ex Celtic captain. Really exciting uh, appointment, I think, that as well. Liam Manning, of course, MK Dons manager, heavily with the QPR job, got player of the year, the Wigan and Rotherham success, so much to talk about. That's what I've got. Um, Of course, like I said, lots of people firing in their thoughts already. I can't wait to hear what you've got to say. Louis says, hi, mate. I know this might be a bit ambitious question, but what do we predict? Who do you think we'll predict uh, to go up next season? First, second and third? I'll definitely be answering that because I did answer, uh, I did, uh, sorry, put, put a few um, questions uh, or opportunity to ask some questions on Instagram at the Unfine Podcast on there and on Twitter at Young Fan Podcast uh, over on there. And a very, very highly requested uh, question was talking about next season's promotion predictions. So I will be giving my early thoughts uh, for next year. Don't worry about that. Very, very, um, a very highly requested question, as I've already said. So don't worry, I will be answering that. Um, Josh says, Charlton wise, this is, a, uh, pessim- uh, this is pessimistic. But I think we'll be see a repeat for next season because I can only see us signing players really late. I just can't see much success at the moment. Interesting, very, very interesting talking point. Um, we'll be coming on to Charlton, Josh. Don't you worry, we'll be coming on to that. Johnny Jackson, of course, uh, sacked a few, uh, probably a few days ago now, probably about a week ago and now. So we'll be uh, talking about that. I'll also be looking at the bookies' favourites to take over the Charlton um, job as well. I want to hear from you as a Charlton fan. What do you think? Uh, who do you think should be the next manager? Lots of people giving their thoughts as well. Clayton says, hi, how are you doing, Clayton? Hope you're well. Nat says, most, import- most disappointing team this season. Well, we could start uh, talking about that of course um who that would be of course uh, spark a bit of controversy i'm sure but I'm, I'm excited to have that sort of debate clayton says this time next week i'll be at wembley cannot wait for it can someone um also let me know as well i know general sale for that ticket of those tickets for the playoff final go out on the 16th so i believe that is monday isn't it is there a chance there will be tickets for that game or do you, are we expecting a full sellout um, and there won't be any tickets available when it goes on to general sale on Monday. That's what I want to ask. Um, that's my question to you. Um, uh, Charlie says, how do you think Bristol Rose will get on next season? Of course, I'll be, I'm gonna, I think I should keep a note of these questions because there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, and uh, Clayton, good luck, uh, mate, at Wembley. I believe that is to uh, 
I believe that is, it. yeah, to Clayton. Uh, Musa says, if Sunderland do get promoted, I wonder who will sign next season. Very, very interesting. Uh, Lou says, in club shot now, uh, packed, but all sorted for Wembley, away the lads. Very, very exciting times. I can imagine it's a very, very exciting time to be a Sunderland fan and a Wickham fan as well. Of course, let's start talking about the semi-final breakdown. I don't even know for Sunderland, we pretty, we pretty much sold out. Okay. Do you think Liam Manning and Scott Twine will leave MK Dons this summer? Okay, lots and lots of questions. I knew this was going to be an interesting stream. The questions are absolutely flying in. So I'm going to keep a note of these questions. At the Unfound Podcast, possibly someone asking Wembley for more tickets. They said yes. I'm told the club is unlikely will get given more seats, but you might be able to pick one up. I do want to try and go to the final. Uh, I don't mind which end I go in as an Oxford United fan. I pretty might prefer to go in the uh, in the Sunderland end because uh, Oxford United and Sunderland, uh, sorry, Oxford United and, and, and Wickham, a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a rivalry there. So I don't mind going in either end. So if I can get a ticket, that would be amazing. Um, I really would like to go to that game just as, an, as a, obviously as a neutral, uh, just watching that one. Of course, we could, I'll be watching it from home if I can't get a ticket. But if you do know if there's any tickets available, uh, then sort of what are the predictions for for that for that. Um, for the tickets and, you know, like that as well. If there's any more going up for sale, very, very interesting. Clayton says, thanks, Nat. Right, let's start off talking about the semi-finals because, again, I'm going to keep a note of these questions. I can pin them, so I'm going to make sure I get all of these questions uh, pinned up so that I do... Um, so I don't forget any. I don't want to forget any of these questions. So stay around. Right, let's talk about the semi-finals we've just watched. I did, of course, my match reaction for Sunderland uh, against uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Both of those legs... Um, but I didn't do too much about Wickham and MK Dons. And the question I want to pose to you as well, and one I'm really interested to answer, one that I did get answered, got asked um, quite recently, was do you think that both the sides that are going to Wembley, so obviously that is Sunderland uh, and Wickham Wanderers, deserve to go through based on their semi-finals performance across both of the legs? Do you think Sunderland outplayed Sheffield Wednesday across the two legs, therefore deserve it? Do you think Wickham outplayed MK Dons over the two legs? And they're, uh, sorry, uh, Wickham outplayed MK Dons, therefore deserve to go to Wembley? That's my question to you. Do you think both of the sides ultimately, playing for a chance to be in the championship next season, deserve to be there based on their semi-final performance? That's going to be quite interesting. That's going to be quite, that says, do we have to? I'm sorry, Nat, we might have to. Uh, don't worry, it won't last long. Um, so, yeah, that, that's that's sort of my my thought, ultimately. That's my thought. Do I do you think that the sides going to Wembley deserve to go to Wembley based on that semi-final performance? Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I probably would agree with that. I probably would agree with that. Um, I do think Sunderland were the better side over the two legs. Um I thought there were moments of Sheffield Wednesday's quality, don't get me wrong, but I thought Sunderland over two legs probably did deserve it. Uh, Nazwell says, hi, I'm a Pompey fan. How are you doing, my friend? Uh, uh, Fergus, that's um, SFS, uh, SFS, SAFC123. It says, yes. Um, Mizzo says, uh, of course, Sunderland outplayed Sunderland 90% of the first leg in the second half. It's 50-50. MK Dons deserve to go through over Wickham, to be fair. Interesting. Interesting. Um to be honest, I do, I do definitely think the MK Dons and uh, and Wickham game was much closer. Was much, much closer. If I'm being totally honest, I think it would be that was much closer in terms of who deserved to, to go through. Um, I do. I mean, both were close, but I, I, to be honest, I probably would say Sunderland pretty comfortably deserved to go through over the two legs. I thought there were moments of Sheffield Wednesday quality, but sometimes you've got to look at it, um, and you've got to go. I thought the first leg was was Sunderland's leg. I thought the second leg, and I think uh, I think it was Miz that said it just a second ago, very, very tight. But I think in the end, you've got to talk about who produced the most moments of quality. It probably would be, probably would be Sunderland. It probably would be Sunderland. And I think it's, it's difficult to take as a Sheffield Wednesday fan. I think Sheffield Wednesday fans, I'm interested to see Nats in the, in the chat right now. Were you disappointed with your performance or do you think you gave it, and I, I, I don't want to make sound this in a, in a, in a patronising way, but do you think it was one of those where you gave it your best shot, but Sunderland were better? I honestly thought both sides were not at their best at all. However, I think Sunderland edged it with their moments of quality. I think in games that are so tight in the playoffs, that's what does it. Because you're never going to see a team be at their best in the playoffs. I think both sides had moments. I think both sides were... I think, yeah, that's what I mean. I think both sides had moments, but in the end, I think Sunderland definitely edged it. And I think it's one of those where 
you're not going to see both sides best in a game of that magnitude because it's a playoff final with sorry, sorry a playoff semi final with so much on the line. But if you're watching right now, can you leave a like and subscribe? If you're new, hit that subscribe button, and if you uh, you know give it a like, it's easy to hit that like, hit that thumbs up button. That really would mean the world. We've got lots of uh, people giving their thoughts in right now. Um, Wickham only just scraped into the playoffs and didn't think there's a championship level side. Interesting. Uh, uh, C just says I think Matt Taylor could work out good success with Exeter. Also used to manage Stockley and uh, Ch um, and used to play for Charlton. However, I'd like Mark Warburton. Might be unrealistic, though. I think Mark Warburton would be a brilliant shout, mate. I think Mark Warburton would be a really, really good shout. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't left a like, by the way, we've got 40, 51 people watching right now. If you haven't left a like on the stream, please hit uh, that like button. It really would mean the world, answering lots of your questions uh, this afternoon. At the moment, talking about who do you think deserve to go to the playoff final. I know we can't change that now, but do you think both of the sides heading to Wembley next Saturday deserve to be going to Wembley? Um, a bit of a controversial one, but breaking that semi-final down. For me, I think Sunderland... Did deserve, are deserving to go to Wembley. Wickham a little bit closer, but Wickham do what Wickham do best. Wickham, they like to play uh, a very, very unique style of playing the Gareth Ainsworth, but it gets results. They manage to get results in the key moments, and you can't argue with that. You can't argue the way that Wickham in these... And, and that's why I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to Wembley and... I think, there's, I think there's a few people thinking that Sunderland might easily beat Wickham. Honestly, I, I don't think it's going to be that sort of game. I will be doing my sort of dedicated preview for that. But when we talk about it, I think it's going to be a much, much closer game than people think. I think I think Sunderland, I mean, I've experienced it first hand as an Oxford United fan. Sunderland, sorry, Wickham, in the key moments and in the big, big moments when their back's against the wall and they are the underdogs, they just they just do they just do crazy, crazy things. Uh, Sunderland outplayed Wednesday in the first leg. I'm sorry. I, I probably would agree with that. I think Sunderland were much better in, in, that, in that first leg over Sheffield Wednesday. Um, uh, Kaza says, yes, Sunderland to be fabulous manager. Uh, yes, yeah, Sunderland do fabulous manager is what we need to get those players' confidence up. Wickham uh, may be on there unbeaten in 13 in their last game. Uh, Wickham with a classic Wickham performance. Exactly, I just said that, mate. I 100% agree with you. It's a very, very Wickham performance, and they will do the same, I expect, on Saturday. I hope Sunderland go up, to be honest. Clayton says, to be honest, I think we didn't switch off at the Sheffield Wednesday go. I think we would have kept a clean sheet. Uh, yeah, I think that was a... I mean, to be fair, it was a very, very good Sheffield Wednesday goal. Charlie Webb says, I'm a Bristol Rovers fan. Looking forward to watching your League One content now. Very, very exciting. Congratulations. What a 7-0 win against Scumthorpe. Of course, a very, very uh, impressive and a fabulous win to get you automatically promotion. Charlie, congratulations. Nat says, we were awful first game, but I don't think Bannon was fit. But I'm not taking anything away from Sunderland. Interesting from you, Nat. I think Sunderland fans will definitely appreciate that sort of honesty. I thought Bannon in that second leg was very... Uh, that, that pass, by the way, for that goal Sheffield for, for Sheffield Wednesday. And one thing I would say as well, although both sides in those games didn't Probably, I mean, I'm talking about Wednesday and Sunderland here. And I probably would talk about, the, it probably would probably work for the other semi-final as well. But especially the Sunderland and Sheffield Wednesday one. We talk about both sides probably not showing their quality uh, or showing their, their best quality that they've shown across the season. Which is very, very unrealistic to say anyway because of the fact it's a playoff semi-final. I thought the Sheffield Wednesday goal was probably the best goal and best move. Uh, or definitely the best goal out of all the goals we saw in that playoff Um in, in that playoff semi-final, in, in, in the Premier semi-finals between those two sides. I thought the first goal for Ross Stewart, I think all of the goals that Sunderland scored were preventable. And that will be so frustrating. I think that's that, that'll that probably... I'm interested to see what, what, what fans of these clubs have got to say, but I would probably have to say all of those sides, uh, all of the goals, sorry, for, for Sheffield Wednesday, uh, for, sorry, for Sunderland, Sheffield Wednesday would feel they could have been uh, preventable and could have been prevented. So, of course, that would be a bit of a frustration. I thought the pass from Barry Bannon and, and the Marvin Johnson goal... And the Lee Gregory finish. That's a really, really good move. So I was really impressed with that. Who do you think would be a good as a next charter manager? Um, it's difficult to say who's available, isn't it? I think Mark Warburton, I know you've already just mentioned that. I think Mark Warburton would be a very, very good uh, option. I don't know whether or not that is uh, unrealistic or something that's, that's possible. Um, but I definitely would. Um, if you get Mark Warburton in, I think that'd be a very, very good appointment. I think what he did at QPR was was very, very impressive. I think him leaving QPR was a little bit controversial. I know a lot of QPR fans maybe didn't want him to go. So I think if you could get Mark Warburton, that would be an absolutely brilliant appointment. Honestly, Sheffield Wednesday looked really poor. I can't uh, remember them creating chances. Our goalkeeper did nothing over the two legs. Yeah, I believe that's a Sunderland, yeah, Sunderland fan talking about that. You know, I, I think Sheffield Wednesday, the goal they scored was very, very good. But other than that, their chance creation, I think, definitely did let them down. Kaz said reasons why Wickham play better to the top sides because top teams are more skillful and like players against their more rough physical Wickham side. You make a very, very good point there, good Kaz. Uh, very, very good point. By the way, I've just hit 100 viewers right now. This is absolutely mind-blowing. We've got 100 people right now. Can you give this episode a like? Can you give this episode a like right now? That would be absolutely incredible. 
We've got 100 people right now. Can we get to 30 likes? That's, you know, 20 of you. Um, sorry, 10 of you. Just 10 of you, the 100 people right now. Hit that like button. That really, really would mean the world. That really does help the growth of the podcast. Um, right, let's, uh, let's get a few more and, and discuss in that. Um, opinions on uh, Kamara of Plymouth. A very, 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 very good player this season. Mate, very, very, a very impressive player. Uh, do you expect Charlton to improve next year? I do. I really, really do. Right, let's quickly go back to what I was saying um, about this, sort of when, when we talk about the two... Uh, the, the two semi-finals, the other, the Wickham MK Dons one, and um, again we I didn't really do I didn't do a match reaction for that. I didn't really get an opportunity to speak about that too much. I think people have been saying it in the live chat. I think they're spot on. MK Dons play no doubt a much more attractive brand of football compared to Wickham Wanderers. But Wickham's experience, the way that Wickham play, I think it was Josh that just said it in the chat just a second ago. Wickham are so so good at playing their own way. And it sounds so silly, but in terms of believing in the way that they play and the way that Gareth Ainsworth has, has come in and about what's... I think he's been there about five... I think over five years. He's been there such a long time. And the, what he's installed into that side is something that every Wickham player that now comes in understands exactly what they've got to do. And the reason why... There's no surprise. They don't get lucky. The reason why they, they win games and the reason why that they get these results... Um, and they find ways to win and all that sort of... And, and they you know, win in the big games. They get at Wembley against Oxford two years ago to get promoted. Nearly stayed up in the championship last year. They're going to be going to another playoff final on Saturday. The reason why they do that is because they're so, so sure and so understanding within each other and within their manager exactly how they have to play. They don't think they have to have the ball. They'll play a style of way that will not be very, very attractive. But what they will do is they can... They know exactly what they've got to do. And, and, and the way that they play with, with Sam Vokes as their, as their striker, he's the vocal point. He's the player they can get to. He can score goals. We saw the goal he scored in the first leg. Very, very good goal. But he's also someone that he can get hold of the ball and they can find the passes out there. They've got Joe Jacobson on the overlap on that side as well. We'll talk about Sko and he's been brilliant this year as well. Obita, a very, very good player. These are the players that Wickham Wanderers, they got this very, very clear culture, very, very clear style, and they're so sure what they do. They don't really care who they play. They don't really care who they play. They do pretty prefer playing against a size like Sunderland, like Oxford, like MK Dons. They prefer those sort of sides. The sides, and they're just examples, there are more. But those are sides that actually try and play, you'd say, less direct, more attractive football. But we, we can prefer playing those because they can bully them, they can play very, very aggressive, and they can find a way to win. And that's exactly what they do. And that's why they're so successful. And that's why they, they're, they're very, very good at what they do. So when they play against Gillingham and AFC Wimbledon at the end of last season, they get one point uh, against both of those. And they you know, come away with two draws. And everyone goes, Wickham should be beating the sides in the relegation uh, relegation battle. And both of those sides got relegated in the end. Why did they struggle against them? Because they're the sides that play similar to Wickham. They're the sides that play similar to them and they struggle against them. But they know they can bully the sides that play attractive football. And that's going to be the difference for me. That, and, and that's my opinion, which is why Sunderland, and I'm not saying Sunderland haven't got a chance at all. The quality Sunderland have got, and I was very, very impressed with them. I'm very impressed with their manager. I like their manager, Axe Neil. I think he's a really, really good manager. And the way they play their football, absolutely no reason at all why well, they can't beat Wickham. But they're going to have to be very, very, sounds silly, but they've got to be, they've got to be very, very clever with how they play against Wickham. You can't just play your own way, whereas Wickham will believe they can play their own way, and I hope this makes sense. Wickham will play how they've been playing all this season. Sunderland are going to have to adapt a little bit. Sunderland are going to have to play a little bit differently because if they play the way they normally do, Wickham are going to find find ways to stop that. They still might win Sunderland if they play like that, but it'd be much, much... I think Wickham have got a much less chance of winning if Sunderland have got to adapt a little bit and play a little bit differently. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, Twine's my dad has hello. Finally got out of the club shop. Just a few scarf and a few flags. Can't wait for another big game at Wembley. Uh, I think it's going to be a huge game, mate. Uh, I think it's going to be absolutely huge, Lucy. Uh, who do you think uh, will be champions next season? We'll come back to that. A lot of people are asking my predictions for next year, so don't worry, we'll come on to that. Cleanses over the whole tie. I can only remember Patterson making one save and over a kick from Bars. Yeah, I do remember that in the second leg, wasn't it? Um, Matt says, who's going to be the best championship side that's been... Uh, who's going to be the best championship side that's been relegated? Very, very good question. I'll answer that now, actually. Because it's Derby, isn't it? It's Derby, Peterborough, and uh, Barnsley. Um, I think it completely depends on what Derby do in terms of the in terms of their takeover. If that takeover goes through, I think if Taker, that takeover is successful and Wayne Rooney looks like he's going to stay as well. I think he's a very very good manager, Wayne Rooney. By the way, I think if that takeover goes through and they can really bring in some some really good players on top of the players, uh, some of the young lads they've got already. They, of course, they've got to be careful they don't lose too many. I think that's really really important to say as well. Um, 
I think if they can do that, I think Derby could be the side to really watch out for next year. Um, if But that takeover's got to be important because if they don't get that takeover, they're still in a lot of difficulty. You don't really know how sides are going to react to it. But if they get really, really good money in, in terms of sort their self out financially, which again is not easy, but certainly something that they'll be hoping to do, um, I think they're going to be a real, really good shout. My prediction, I, I mean, it could completely change. and it, it's, it's very, very dependent on that takeover. If it goes through, I think Derby are going to be a side really, really... Um, that, that could blow the that blow the season away, but again, it completely depends on that. Again, Barnsley and Peterborough, are very very good sides, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure they'll be desperate to go to to, um, to go straight back up. Of course, when you get relegated, you want to be promoted as soon as possible. Over the whole tie, I can only remember we've already done that one. Grant says suddenly getting promoted. Very very strong opinions, and uh, I like the confidence, Grant. Uh, to be fair, Clayton, I can't remember how mu- I can't remember much about the, both the, uh, both the games. Um, one is my dad says pain. I can imagine it's quite painful as an MK Dons fan at the moment. Clayton says I can't, uh, I can't now other than the two goals. Honestly, I think Neil um, will know how to handle them better than any manager we've had him since. Uh, we've we've had him since Sunderland. We have had since Sunderland been in League One. Okay, very very interesting. Uh, it depends on Derby takeover exactly now. One hundred percent. Twine, how much you reckon Twine will be sold for? A big chunk of it goes to Swindon as well. Will Sunderland go? Will Twine go? Sorry, is, is that a guarantee? Is, is is that something that's definitely going to happen? I think Twine is is definitely someone that, that could be on his way, um, but yeah, I, I think it, it's definitely something that's going to attract a lot of attention. I can imagine that the rumours are already flying in. Um, but again, he might stay. And, and I mean, you know more than anything. Twine is my dad, of course. It's, it's in your name. You, you're his dad, apparently. Um, no, well, no, apparently you're the son of Twine. Um, so you'll know much better than I will. But is that a guarantee that he's going? Is that something that we that we would know for sure? Interesting stuff. Um, Wickham are going up. I just I, I've just spoken about that Oscar really, and I, I said that I think Wickham they know how to deal with the moments. They know how to deal with these really really big games that that mean so much. It's it's tough. It really is. Um, but Sunderland are a very very good side, and the, the way they play, I just don't know. Uh, Paddy, as in, I don't don't know in, in a positive way. It could go either way. Uh, Paddy says. Um, up the, uh, I believe that's Wickham Wanderers. Uh, Nat says, or oh, could Derby be like Ipswich this season? Too many players, they get taken over. Maybe, but I think, I think they'll probably learn from that. You don't know. Side, so, uh, you, some, you say that all the time, don't you? Will they learn? I, I, I'd like to think they probably learn, but I, I don't know. I think Ipswich have probably learned a, a lesson this year. Um, the amount of players they, they came in, uh, that, that came in. By the way, we've just hit 200 people watch, watch, watching right now. Give your uh, Hit that like button. 200 people watching me live talk about the League One this season. Amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, you should be outside. outside. It's, a lovely, it's a lovely day. I don't know why you're in here watching me. Uh, hit that like button. It really, really would mean the world. Um, uh, has uh, He's too good for League One. He, I mean, he is very, very good. Twine is the best player in League One at the moment, in, in my opinion. I think he's had a very, very good season. A very, an extraordinary season, should I say. Um, I trust Neil to the job. I think we'll play a three at the back against Wickham and outsmart them in a, very, in a, in a way because they expect us to play a back four. I, that's something that I would be surprised... Sorry, I wouldn't be surprised that that happens, Clayton, from a Sunderland perspective. I think you probably are going to have to play a little bit differently because we know the way that Wickham play and we know that, that Wickham are so dangerous... Um, in in a variety in sort of a, in a, in, yeah in a variety of different ways so yeah I I would expect maybe a change tactically and I think like you said earlier I think Alex Neil definitely is the manager that that can do that uh, he's too good for League One I'm pretty sure Twine will be off however a part of me hopes he's loyal and will stay again it all comes down to the interest it all comes down to the interest um you know what will what will that be I can imagine a lot uh, of Championship clubs knocking on the door maybe even some lower in Premier maybe the sides that get relegated from the, the, the Premier League going into the Championship I don't think he's ready for the Premier League yet but I think definitely the Championship um, I think MK Dons are in trouble next season in my opinion I can't see them being successful again soon after they lose all their key players interesting interesting um, Scott Twine will be a big loss if they if they lose him can't imagine Twine and Darling staying they'll be, uh, they're, they're both getting to Championship teams yeah Darling was very very impressive mate very very good uh, Ricky Sunderland going, at uh, Sunderland going up 110% uh, a lot of confident Sunderland fans in the chat uh, do you think Gareth Ainsworth will take a bigger job in the Championship at some point at some point maybe but he's such a wicker man I don't know I think I think QPR were, li- were sort of linked with him a little bit um uh, but again, Gareth Ainsworth it has to has to fit the next club really right, if that makes sense. I think Gareth Ainsworth's got a very very distinctive way of managing a team. I think that the next club has to be really right, which is why Wickham 
he's almost made that a perfect fit for him because of the way that we now know Wickham play, but that's down to Gareth Ainsworth, very, very sure in the way he wants his team to play. So it's going to have to be the perfect fit. He can't go to any old team. He can't just go to a QPR, I don't think, because, you know, the way that QPR sort of traditionally play, I think Gareth Ainsworth would almost be the opposite of that. But that's no criticism of Gareth Ainsworth. It's just a completely contrasting style of play. I think Gareth Ainsworth has got to absolutely fit the next team to a team which isn't easy at all. Um, but I, I, he's definitely got the, the ability to go and to, to manage the championship and uh, maybe uh, take a, a bigger job. But you get Wickham promoted and you can maybe, you know, s- s- see them uh, stay in the league. I, 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 that, that's going to be the, the big task because they got relegated when they are up there you know, last year or yeah, last year. So th- again, if they do go up, the aim will be stay up, yeah, obviously. Um, but even more so considering they've already had a year in there. Of course, the fans weren't there. So that's going to be a, a really, really big, interesting sort of difference. So yeah, I, I think that's, that, that definitely is an interesting talking point. But in answer to your question, uh, Ricky, sorry, um, Webby, it's got to, f- the club, that he, if he does go somewhere else, the club have got to fit Gareth Ainsworth. Um, because again, it's a very, very unique style of play. Um, I think he'd fit someone like Stoke. Maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but, but Stoke is a decent shout, yeah. Uh, Robert says, uh, spot on, Ricky. Yeah. Um, Bernie, interested in Twine, I think. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. I think you're going to be talking about top-end championship clubs uh, or middle-range championship clubs and maybe even some sides getting relegated from the uh, from the Premier League uh, downwards. I mean, Burnley might stay up, mightn't they? That'd be interesting to see. I think Oxford will easily get playoffs next year, if not top two, because you lost silly points in the silly games next season. Will be Oxford's, uh, uh, will be Oxford's mark, my words. I hope you're right, Evan. I really, really hope you're right. Um, Sunderland or Wickham I'm a Sunderland fan um, I mean I'm personally neither uh, but uh, I'm very very interested to see that that final um, I think it's going to be so so tight and again they're completely contrasting styles aren't they completely contrasting styles of play like I said I will be doing my in-depth preview on that game but I think it's going to be really really fascinating really fascinating Right, I think we've sort of discussed the playoffs. Um, while we're all here, by the way, if you leave a like and subscribe if you're new, that really, really would mean the world. Most importantly, just to round up and sort of summarise on the first question I want to talk about, a bit of a debate here. We aren't, my question initially, we've been going for 27 minutes, but the question I originally started with, do you think, we've just watched, of course, both of those semi-finals over the past week or so, very, very exciting times. Do you think the two sides that are going to Wembley, being Wickham and Sunderland, deserve to go through based on those semi-final performances? Yes or no in the chat. Yes or no in the chat right now. Do you think Sutherland and Wickham Wanderers deserve to be at Wembley based on their second half, sorry, their, their uh, semi-final performance? Um, Sutherland are going up, says Robert. Right. While you people get your thoughts in right now, yes or no, very, very interesting times. Let's move on to the next talking point because we've got lots and lots to get through. Um, so much to get through. So let's talk... Um, I mean, next up, we've almost got the, the manager merry-go-round and we've almost touched on it a little bit. Um... Okay, very, very interesting times. Uh, yes, says Josh. You've got a few yeses. Wickham, a Wickham no there. Um, I was sure we were, um, I'm sure we're going to get at, um, ain't going to get at Gareth Ainsworth when uh, when got par- uh, when got uh, Parkinson. Interesting. I think yes, yes in my opinion, both yes. Interesting. Yes, based on the semi uh, semi finals, not the season. That's what I mean, uh, Lou. I think you pick up a really good point. When I asked that question, I specifically said you've got to base it on the semi final because if you base it across the entire season, I think to, for me, if you base it on the entire season, it's got to be probably MK, definitely MK Dons, very tight between Sunderland and Sheffield Wednesday. Um, maybe you edge towards no. I, I think it's almost impossible to distinguish between Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland across the season. Definitely Sunderland in terms of. Um, the playoffs uh, and then the semi-final over Sheffield Wednesday and their performance there. But for me, it has to be MK Dons across the year. But it, I probably would edge towards towards Wickham. I probably would have to say yes for both um, because Wickham were very, very good at what they do. Very, very good at what they do. Uh, if I'm being fair, then yes. If I'm being Dons fan, then no. <laughs> uh, uh, not a Sheffield Wednesday fan. I agree the only fan I've seen who's accepting what happened. Nat Sheffield Wednesday fan agrees. The only fan I've seen. Very well, Nat's a very honest, very, very honest person. That's what we're distinguishing from this live stream so far. Can Derby County win League One? Um, I sort of already answered it. I said if they get a if they get a really successful takeover, absolutely no reason why they can't. But they've got to get that takeover. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, that's what I mean. You've got, it's so different. And what the reason why I sort of, well, I think the best way of breaking down a semi final is do the outcomes that we, the actual outcomes we've seen, do they represent what we maybe think should have happened. And to be honest, 
I probably do think that's right. Will Stewart be able to hack it in the championship? I don't see a reason why not, uh, Robert. I don't see a reason why not. Um, I think he's a very, very good striker. Physicality. I think he's got very, very good pace. A little bit underrated as well. But I think the physicality, the height, the finishing. I think he's got he's a really all-round striker. Do you think Alfie May will leave Cheltenham? I don't know. I think you've got to have another year for me, Alfie May. I think he's got to have another year. I think it's one of those where he did really well in League 2. He did really well as a debut season in League 1. You have one more solid year in League 1. I think he could be off. But again, Cheltenham, you can't disrespect Cheltenham. I think they've had a really, really good year. So I don't know. I don't know. But I think you've got to have another year in League One. I think it'd be a bit, maybe a bit risky for a side to come in at the moment because it'd have to be someone higher up than Cheltenham in terms of in terms of league position. So you'd be looking at a top-end League One side um, or a side pushing to be in the top six. Are they going to take a risk on someone who's only had one good year? I know he's had one in League Two, but you know he's not going to go back down to League Two. So he's got to look at League One. I think that would be really, really fascinating. Like one more year for Alfie May, or maybe until January, until next January. Um, I think if he starts the season really well, gets you know, 15, 20 goals, maybe that's a bit too much, maybe 15 goals by January. I don't see a reason why not. But I think this summer, I think Alfie May will probably stay. Uh, have you seen the, uh, the Ryan Tafazzoli vlog? I haven't, mate. I haven't. But I know he does do those vlogs, doesn't he? I'm fuming at the moment that we haven't hired a manager for two weeks. It's affecting our transfers and players and fans. We don't know what is going on. Charlton fan Josh, I think that is. Um, I'm, I'd be frustrating as well. I would be frustrated. Because I think the summer will be definitely, definitely affected if you don't bring someone in right now. Because all the plans you've got to make, how are you going to attract players to a club right now? Especially when you're coming into a position where the retained list are being announced. So a lot of players are being now officially available on free transfers. How are you going to bring some players in or persuade players to join your project without a new manager? Unless the manager has already been unofficially appointed within the club. And that manager is already talking to people because he knows he's got the chart and job. Maybe it's just a matter of time whether or not they announce it. I don't know. Josh, is that, do you think that's the case? Or do you generally think they just haven't got a manager that's com it's completely still up in the air? Is, is the interview process still open? If you, I think if you understand what you mean by that, if I understand, you understand what I mean by that. Um, it could be a case of they understand who the manager's going to be. They, they're pretty much just waiting for an announcement and that manager's already maybe putting some places into, maybe putting some plans into place. I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to see what you've got to say on that. Uh, over the season, we were the better team, just got on the table, but over two legs, it was Sunderland. If we don't go up, Ross Stewart is gonna, it's gone, as simple as that. Interesting. Uh, now, not really finished, only one point ahead. Um, that's what I mean, it's really, really tight. It's really tight. I think Sheffield Wednesday and Sunderland, if you look at entire league season, I think it's really, really close. Um, which, but you definitely have to say Sunderland over the sh over the semi finals. Uh, can we see Peterborough, uh, Darby, uh, keep Peterborough, Derby County, and Barnsley all get promoted straight back up? I mean, we can see it. First, second, and a uh, and a playoff win. It definitely could happen. Quite rare though. It's very very rare to see all three sides get promoted again. You look at this year, of course, only Rotherham United and potentially Wicker if they beat Sunderland. It'd only be two out of the three. I mean, it's not bad, is it? But it could easily just be one. Um, you know, you talk about um, who the other sides they got. That's really bad. Who are the other side that got um, relegated last year? Rotherham, Wickham, and oh, Sheffield Wednesday, of course. So yeah, Sheffield Wednesday, and they're not going to be promoted this year. So again, it's rare. It could happen though. It could be a rubbish season if Sheffield Wednesday go up two. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that would be uh, definitely uh, rubbing the uh, salt into the wound. Wickham are hard to beat. Personally, I see them going up. They are very, very hard to beat, mate. Exactly. Josh says exactly as well. Right. Wickham don't have the infrastructure to make a run for the Premiership, whereas Sunderland do. That is true. That is true. It does have truth into it, but we've seen a lot of teams probably don't have the necessarily good enough infrastructure or, or maybe don't have the infrastructure yet. Um, but what I would say, Robert, I think Wickham, if they get promoted, I think from Championship to, to the Premier League, I think that's a very, very big jump. And you'd hope by the time they get to that Premier League or by the time that jump is made, the infrastructure can be built. I can't see... It's the size they get promoted into you know into the Championship next year. I don't think they'll be getting back-to-back -back promotions. I think Sunderland could do it infrastructure-wise. They definitely won't get to the Premier League. I'd be very, very surprised if we're talking in a year's time a Sunderland side playing in the Premier League. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that jump is, is probably... Um, so far in advance that I don't think I don't think that that infrastructure could be built ultimately. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, but Sunderland definitely do have that now. They have the stadium, they have the facilities, uh, they have the fans. Um, I don't think um, Sunderland are hard to beat. 15 unbeaten now. Of course they are both. That's what I mean. We're, we're not, you know, this is almost like a bit of a discussion ahead of it. I'll be doing my preview or deep down preview into the game. It's so so difficult because you've got Wickham who probably aren't. I don't think they are in as good a form as Sunderland, but very very close. 
but the way they play is so difficult to beat. But Sunderland, the way they're playing at the moment in terms of 15 games unbeaten, it's going to make such a fascinating game of football. Um, are them doing VAR on Saturday? No. No, they aren't. Um, only VAR in, in the Premier League in the uh, for, in England, uh, Mark. It doesn't matter if it's at Wembley or whatever. It's just the Premier League, um, thankfully. Josh says, but I don't think it makes much difference having an official manager in the background because the owner and his son are the ones that do the transfers. I'll let you give your opinions on that. The owner and his son had no experience in the game at all. I know. Who is it? And I, I really do apologise. Um, I'm going to have to find his name because I, I can't talk about him and not have his name. It's the Charlton fan. Um, and definitely a massive shout, a shout out to him. Uh, he's, a ch- he's got a Charlton fan. U- he's like a YouTube channel. I'm trying to look it up now. Um, and... What's his name? Tyler Tyler Rowlinson. Um, I was watching sort of his reaction to the sacking of Johnny Jackson and his thoughts on the future. And he was saying, Johnny Wilson, there is VAR. I don't think there is. I don't think there's VAR in the in the League One playoff final. I don't think there is. I think it's the only the Premier League. Am I am, am I completely missing something there? Is there VAR? So maybe there is VAR. I don't think there is. I'll be very, very surprised if there is. Um, I think, yeah, so Tyler, Ro- uh, Tyler Rowlinson. Um, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say, Josh. You've got it in there. There's VAR in the championship playoff final. Is there? Wow. You've proved me wrong. You saw- Fair play. I don't know. I, if, if it's in the championship playoff final, then it, you'd like to think it probably is in the League One final. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Someone could find that out. There is VAR on the championship final. Yeah, a lot of people are saying there's VAR on the championship final. If there is, is there for the League One final? Interesting. Um, someone find that out if, if you could. Not in League One player final, just the championship. Okay, there we go. Uh, I know if they're thinking about having VAR, I don't think if they're going to use it. I think it'd be so, so silly to do that. Let's remove you. Because, yes, we're completely missing something. Yes, you're completely missing something. Maybe I am. Right, let's hide that user because uh, I don't really know what he's doing. Um, what what I say is either have VAR in all the leagues and competitions, or don't have it at all. It's just simply not fair. Yeah, I do understand what you mean. Look, I do understand what you mean. Um, because I think you've got to be. I think yeah, the, the consistency is very very important. Um, but yeah, maybe I've got that completely wrong. I, for some reason, I have my head that we're not. That don't they are doing the, the they are doing VR in any of them. But again, I got that completely wrong. So fair play. Um, but if they are in the championship, that's interesting. Uh, there are so many teams in League One that uh, that don't belong to be there: Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday, Charlton, Sutherland, uh, to name a few. Uh, Forest on to Forest on today. Yeah, cheering Forest on today. Interesting that uh, just Championship, not League One. Interesting. That's a bit strange though. The consistency. I don't even want VAR to be. I mean, I personally wouldn't want VAR um, in in the League One in the League One playoff final. But again, I understand the, the debate about consistency. If you're going to have it in the Championship one, then surely you'd have it in the in the League One one. Premier League and Championship have VAR and Final League One only have VAR goal and technology. Yeah, I'd expect goal and technology. Um, but I, VR, that is uh, very, very interesting. I, didn't, I don't think we had that discussion. Well, that's the beauty of the live chat. You're finding lots of things out as we go. Um, where will we go next? I feel like we're on a tangent. Yeah, I was talking about Charlton. Sorry, I was talking about Charlton. Tyler Rodinson. I gave his, uh, watch his episode, uh, watch his episode, and uh, sorry, his video. And if you haven't watched it, it's a Charlton fan, or maybe just interesting. I'm not a Charlton fan, but I find it really interesting. He was talking about Charlton doing transfers. And this is a question to you, by the way. A question to you in the live chat right now. Would you be frustrated if your owner or your owner's son, let's say your board of directors, are in charge of transfers and not your manager? Are you somebody that wants to have your manager, I'm talking hands-on manager, and this is almost going to link to what I said about what I'm going to say about Fleetwood because Fleetwood have managed to, uh, have appointed Scott Brown as a head coach, and that's the difference between a head coach and a manager for me. I think the manager is the manager, and he's in charge of. Uh, sort of the whole the wide scale of things. Head coach, I believe, is solely football based, and someone higher up is in terms of recru- in charge of recruitment. So for me, in the comments down below, sorry, in the live chat, all the comments down below, but definitely in the live chat right now, we've got two hundred thirty four point two hundred thirty five people watching right now. Do you want somebody in the board of directors in charge of recruitment, or would you want your manager in charge of it? I know exactly what I'm trying to. I know exactly what I want. But I'm interested to see what you've got to say. I know that that's almost what's happening at Charlton. So if you've got your thoughts uh, on that, let's say in your hands, for example, Clayton, Sunderland fan, let's say starting from next, would you rather have someone higher up um, managing the recruitment or do you want Alex Neal doing it as an example? And I'm interested to see what lots of people have got to say about that. 
I think, because that's what's happening at Charlton. I can imagine, and from what a lot of people are saying, it's very, very frustrating. Um, Adam says, Premier League, yeah, we did that. Clayton says, I don't understand why, because if, I don't understand why, because when it's being a big game, I don't know why, because, I understand why, because with it being a big game, in a VR in one game, you haven't used it all season. Yeah, that's a bit bizarre. I don't understand why they're doing that. Uh, Adam says, uh, to be honest, um, any game, no matter what league, should have VAR in Wembley. Interesting. I think I almost, I'm, I'm sort of in the middle between what Clayton's saying there about the one game and not the entire season. Because, for example, how many decisions this year have we seen? By the way, the officiating in League One this year I think has been very, very poor anyway. So I think, to be honest, I think it's not a bad thing necessarily for the level of officiating. Uh, I think some of the some of the decisions that I've seen, not just an, as not just as a um, not as an Oxford fan, but I think across the, even the playoff games, I thought the officiating across some of the decisions in the officiating um, across those playoff games were absolutely abysmal. So I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily um, that they're doing VAR, but the idea of VAR is a little bit daunting. Uh, but of course, I asked you in the chat a minute ago, prefer a manager or a head coach? Because at the moment, we're seeing Charlton looking to not give their manager the uh, sort of recruitment um handling it's going to be looked at by their by by the owners i I don't know what i don't know what i think about that because obviously fleetwood with scott brown coming in he's been appointed as a head coach a lot of people get a little bit confused about it managers and louis got a brilliant uh, brilliant point for us here managers have the knowledge connections and the vision in regards to player development for me they have to be in charge of transfers i'm 100 percent in your boat louis 100 percent in your boat I don't think that necessarily means Scott Brown's going to fail at Fleetwood. I'm not saying that at all. Because a lot of the time, they, people can come in as, as head coaches and then get promoted to a manager. And sometimes for a first job, because it is Scott Brown's first job as a manager, of course, he left Celtic. I think he left Aberdeen originally, wasn't he? He was Aberdeen for a while. Then he, of course, he's now coming as head coach. Maybe as a first job as a coach, can come in as a head coach, I understand it. But you've got, for me, if you're going to talk about a long-term future, it's got to be a manager. It's got to be a manager, which is why I think it's a really good appointment for Fleetwood, a really good appointment for them. I think it's going to be, if it goes well, and I think, I mean, everything's like that, if it goes well, but, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I think it's really, really interesting to see someone come as a head coach. I think if that goes really, really well, then being appointed to a manager long term, I think that's really, really, really quite, you know, I think that's a really positive thing. But I think it's really, really interesting to see um, the difference in a manager and a head coach, because you don't have in charge of transfer. Remember, these. I think it's a bit contradiction, really. And you think about the head coach has got to coach the players, so surely he should have a say in the players that he coaches. I don't know if that's me being, na- me being naive or not, but in terms of he's on the training ground with them every single day, he's managing them on a match day, surely you'd have a say in the players that come in, right? I, I, that's my thought. And you know, The position that Charlton are right now, they sat Johnny Jackson. By the way, I've come, I'm going to just catch up with all these as well, but I know there's a bit of a delay. Should, first of all, a poll. Can I do a poll? Because we've got lots of people in there right now. Can we do a poll? Can we do a poll? Surely we can do a poll. Create a poll. We can do a poll. This is very, very exciting. Should Johnny Jackson... Should Johnny Jackson... Um, what am I trying to say? English. Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? Does that even make sense? Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? That, so that doesn't sound right. Right, you know what I mean. I think that English is absolutely right. Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? I'm meant to be taking A-level English, but apparently I can't form simple questions together. Um, you know what I mean, anyway. Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? I think that makes sense. The poll should be up right now. Um, that's the first question for me, because I think we talk about owners, we talk about the new manager chart, but I mean, someone's lost their job, so that's going to be quite interesting. Um... Manager in charge of transfers, definitely alongside, obviously, a good negotiating scouter like Steve Gallum, who we have. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a, but of course, it's not just your owner that's going to be going around watch all the games, for example, and, and picking those players up. But, again, it's about your recruitment team. Of course, you've got your chief scout, got, I imagine, a, a very, very large recruitment um, team. So that would be interesting. Um, but, yeah, it's bizarre. Manager in charge of transfers, definitely, alongside, obviously, a good negotiator and good scouter. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that's right, mate. The officiating this season has been absolutely shocking. I think it has been absolutely abysmal. Uh, Lewis, so I think in necess- in, we're talking about VAR and talking about the extra help they could get in the in the final in a game of that importance. I don't see a problem with it in that sense, um, but I get what you mean. It's 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 difficult, isn't it? 
Uh, managers have control of transfers. That's why he's bringing players to get on with it. Trusts uh, and knows. Exactly. You've got to... I think for me, you've, if I'm a manager, I want control in terms of transfers. If I'm a head coach, even if I'm a head coach, I understand that... I don't, I, I'm not saying every manager, you know, head coach shouldn't exist. I'm just saying, if I'm a head coach, I should have some say in the players that we bring in. Because otherwise, you're talking about a long-term future. We, we talk about lots of different... Um, I guess, yeah, we talk about a long-term future, talking about a project you want to sort of be part of. Surely you want some sort of influence in in terms of yeah in terms of that um, in terms of that long term plan. That that's just my opinion. Uh, Clayton says I would rather Alex Neil because he'll get choose what, I'd rather have, uh, he'll get to choose what players he wants to keep, who out of contract and who wants to buy. I hate when people just give him the players that he might not even want. Exactly for me that's it. That's that's a really good point, Clayton. Lewis says the linesmen are useless. Exactly. I mean we won't talk about the one against Plymouth, Oxford United Stonewall penalty, flags were offside. He's watched a different game. Not over it, clearly. Uh, Robert, uh, if you let owners bring the players in, you get players like Jack Rodwell, <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, Mark Connor says, League One referees need more training. I mean, they either need more training, Mark, or we need new referees completely. Or we'll just get VAR in. I'm not sure about that, though. I think both clubs need to agree on the use of VAR. They'll do, uh, they did well, they did with a goal on technology, but not on VAR. Uh, interesting, so if it comes down to a decision between both sides, that, that would make sense. Um, Johnny Jackson deserves so much more. He need more time. He deserves a full season. Cash says, hi, how you doing, my friend? Uh, Nat says, what Sunderland fans think of the referee at Hillsborough? What uh, what did, uh, sorry, Sunderland fans think of the referee at Hillsborough? I mean, as a neutral, I was a bit frustrated with the officiating. I know someone in the comments down below for one of my... Um, match actually, it was the second leg, yeah. And I had a bit of a go at the, the referee talking about... Um, him being quite a poor referee, I thought he tried to let the game go a little bit, um, and I, I thought it, he tried to be very lenient with his decisions, and it sort of caught up on him, and that can be so annoying as a, as a as a fan and as a neutral. You know, when the referee tries to be this sort of like character where he can go, no, nope, that's absolutely fine. You know, that normally would be a foul, but I'm going to try and let it go, try and let the game flow. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But if they're stone wall fouls, then for me it's just silly to do that because it's going to get caught up on you. Because you're then going to come to the 80th minute and you're flying cards out like you're doing a magic show. And then and then it's definitely getting caught up on you. And that can be so annoying because you, sometimes you, sometimes in games you've got to be a strong character and you've got to be you've got to be firm with your decisions. I'm not talking about blowing every time there's a foul and play the adva- not play the advantage. Of course, play the advantage, let the game flow. But then he tries it at the start. And then the longer the game went on, Sutherland and Sheffield Wednesday players just knew exactly what they wanted to do, break the game up, especially Sunderland in the first half. You can't, I can't blame them, but you're breaking the game up, and then it's like, you know, what do you expect? What do you expect when you've let so much go? It's it's, it's annoying. Um, 90 minutes is enough watching some of these matches without VAR interruptions. Yeah, I, I, I'm probably not for it, if I'm being honest, mate. I'm probably not. I think I understand the, the use of VAR. I think, the, I think VAR is improving. I think VAR is definitely getting better. Um, in the Premier League, that is, but I don't think it's ready to be introduced yet. Um, I just don't think it is. I just don't think it is. Um, I just think it's one of those where it needs, it needs to be introduced. I think for an entire, well, may, is the best introduction of VAR in a one-off game, or is it best to introduce it at the start of the season and use it for a whole year? Because you're not going to see the best of VAR in one game, are you? Because if, what if there's, I mean, it's unlikely, but it could be a chance that there's that VAR isn't even really used, or there isn't a big decision that's relied on VAR in the playoff final, and everyone goes, "Yeah, VAR's fine. We bring it in the start of next season." I don't think would happen, by the way. But let's say it does. It's really successful in this League One final. I don't. And again, it, there might not even be one in the League One playoff final. But say there is, you go into next year, you bring it at the start of the season, and then you're looking at, you know, by the way, one game is completely different to a 46 game season, so. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't think VAR... I personally... The simple question is, do I think VAR should be in League One? Do I want to sit in League One? No, I don't. I just don't. I think it's got better, but I don't want to see it. I'm interested to know, do... And that's... By the way, that's someone that's just been saying the referees have been really bad this season. So it's not, you know, it's not that, you know, I feel that we've got a bit lucky with some of the decisions and I don't want to be, you know, r- you know, rightfully exposed. Obviously not. I'm just saying I, I think it just shouldn't be introduced. I think it's just, it's just the way that it impacts games. It's, it's annoying. Um... I don't think that was that bad. I don't think was that bad on Monday, to be honest. I talk about referee in there. Interesting, Clayton. Uh, hi, what's your thoughts on Carlson as an Oxford United fan? I think he's had a fair few seasons to try and get promoted now, and has he failed? I mean, in terms of getting promoted, uh, Lee, uh, what, uh, Lee W, then, I mean, he, he has failed so far. Um, do I think he's a failure as a manager of Oxford United? No, I don't. Do I want to see Oxford United stay with Carl uh, Robinson for another year? Yes, I do. 
Am I a little bit worried about the speculation surrounding his future at the moment? A little bit. I think he probably... Um, I think the best, sometimes the best way to, to judge a manager at the moment is probably who he's being linked with. Uh, it, it sounds a bit silly, but I think if you're linked to a job like QPR, which I don't think he'll go and get, but you've got to be linked with him, and, and the bookies are, um, are, are fairly solid with the options they're going with, and the bookies for at the moment is Liam Manning for that QPR job. Um, clearly he's doing something right, isn't he? Clearly he's doing something right, and the football that we play is very, very good. I'm not going to sit here and be a Carmerson super fan and, and say that he's done everything right. I don't think he has. I think uh, defensively last season we weren't good enough. I think defensively it cost us last year. But the, the football that we play, the goals we score, the, the, the attractive style of play we, we, we sort of get to see as an Oxford United fan base, I think is, is really, really good um, and, and great as a, as, a, as a football fan. Do I think we are on the right track um, long term to Carlson? Yes, I do. Um, but like I said, there are flaws. There's obvious flaws there. You know, like I said, you, I mean, we've been in two playoff campaigns. We weren't in a playoff campaign this year. Um, so, yeah, I think, but I think long term we probably are looking a little bit. Uh, we are we are still on the right track for me. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't get rid of him if that's the question. I wouldn't get rid of him. Um, here we go. I'm interested to know: Do Oxford United fans like Sean Clare? Did do Oxford United fans like Sean Clare? Do they uh, do they rate him because he's been in class this season, Charlton, in an awful side? We didn't get to see him really, Josh. To be honest, we didn't get to see uh, Sean Clare. I uh, met him in Sainsbury's once. Nice guy. Um, but other than that, I didn't really get to see him play. I saw him more in Sainsbury's than I did as an Oxford United player. Um, I think he had certain... Pot- well, I mean, we were playing him in, a, in the wrong position. We were trying to play him as like a right wing back. Uh, I know he's been playing sort of centre back, right side of centre back for you, which maybe could be a bit similar. But his positioning when he was at Oxford, when he was playing at right back, was absolutely all over the shop. So... I don't know. I, for me, I I didn't mind. I didn't. I didn't. I think Sean Clare certainly had potential. I think the power and the strength of him is very, very good. But he did have a tendency to switch off a little bit at those key moments. But he's done well for Charlton this year. So uh, fair play to him. I don't have anything against him. It just didn't really work out for him at Ox. I think he wanted to go. I think Carlson probably needed him to to, to go. He obviously, went on loan to Burden for the second half of last year. So it probably was best for both parties that he did leave the club. Um, but nothing against him. I think he's. I think that clearly he's doing well right for Charlton. So for fair play to him. Um. Bottom position next season, uh, I think Bolton could be in the top six next year, mate. I wouldn't put a definite position on him, but I think if Bolton get the right players in and, and continue on the Ian Everett and the tra- uh, tra- trajectory that they're going on at the moment, I think it's very, very positive. For me, I, I would see them I'd see them in that top six. Uh, Clayton says, do, uh, uh, did he, he did wind up at the um, end, though, when um, he wouldn't blow the whistle at the end. Yeah, I, I, I do remember that. Uh, are you excited about the potential move to Stratfield? Break? Um, y- yes. Um, but it's complicated. Uh, but I am excited for. It. I think. I think if it happens, I think it's very, very good for the football club. But I think we're very, very far off that. Um, at the moment. Uh, but certainly something that could happen. Uh, Roberts, seriously, too early to say. Uh, Sean Clare was a midfielder at Wednesday, I think. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he did have time to show for Wednesday, didn't he? Uh, when are we getting the next? When are we getting the next season prediction uh, predicted? I can do. I mean, my my real one, my my big one, of course, would be the start of uh, next season. Uh. But I will predict, I'll try and do my prediction for next year right now. You've asked for it. Um, it's so, so difficult, by the way. These are, these are not my official predictions because, again, we haven't even had a transfer window. This season hasn't even finished yet. Um, I think if Derby County get the tech, you can clip this up. I'm ready for this to get absolutely laughed at next year. I think if if Derby County get the takeover and they get a takeover, they don't lose too many of their players. There's already a lot of ifs. They will win the league next year, in my opinion. I think Peterborough and Barnsley. I think Peterborough will be in the top six next year. Barnsley might not be. I think Bolton will be in the top six next year. I think... Let's get the lead table up. Should we get the lead table up now? Let's switch over to... This screen here. Can we go over to this one? Right. Let's go to the League One table. I think if if Derby County get a, get that takeover sort, I think they really have a chance of, of if not winning the league, definitely in the top two. Certainly going back back for promotion. Um, I think MK Dons again. I think someone mentioned it earlier. I think MK Dons are very very reliant on what happens with Scott Twine. What happens with a lot of their players, Harry Darling as well. I think if they lose a few of them, if they lose both of them, I think they're going to be in a really interesting position. If they lose their manager as well, of course. Liam Manning's uh, for, for MK Dons, they're in a position at the moment where you lose Liam Manning, their manager. You lose Scott Twine, you lose Harry Darling. That's the core of your team, and your manager gone. 
Of course, it's still quality there. But that's very, that's very, very significant people, not just players, people, being, of course, the manager as well, leaving the club. I don't know. I don't know. Sheffield Wednesday, of course, they'll be back up for it. Sheffield Wednesday, I don't see a reason why they can't be back up for it. I think they'll they'll learn from this. They'll, they'll go again for sure. Um, again, we have to wait and see what happens to Sunderland and Wickham. Uh, Plymouth, I mean, they had a bit of a surprise, didn't they? I'm going to talk about surprise seasons. I think MK Don certainly have had that, and that does depend on their future uh, in terms of the, the summer and what happens there. So if they'll be back next year and sort of bounce back um, from that defeat and, and, and sort of go again after a really surprisingly, you know, I think a very, very successful year for them. Uh, Plymouth, I think, are the same uh, to an extent to MK Dons, but I think you've, you've got to um, appreciate that Again, it's, it's only going to get difficult, more difficult. We say it every single year. I think you've got a side in Plymouth that are definitely building. I think you've got lots of great players in there. Connor Grant, I love I love him. I think he's a brilliant player. I think Kamara is a, a fantastic player. I think Hardy is a very, very good player as well. Cooper in goal. I think it depends on his future. But I think if he stays, I think you've got a really good player there as well. So again, it depends on the players that stay and, and who go, which is why doing predictions right now is, is, is virtually impossible. You don't know the future of the clubs. Um Oxford, we, I'd like to think, will be back up in the, in the top six or pushing the top six next year. Bolton as well, I think they might finish in the top six. They have a really good chance of them in the top six. I think they'll, they'll learn a lot from this year, a good year, but then they'll learn a lot. I think Ian Everett is definitely going to come in. Oh, sorry, not come in, but I think bring in. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Bring in some some more players. A really good gen transfer window. Build on that. Uh, I think that'd be fascinating. Portsmouth, Danny Cowley. I, th- I think he's somebody that that's still, still building a squad at, uh, at Portsmouth. And again, there, there's no reason why they won't be back. And then again, you know, and as I'm going through it, Ipswich, they'll definitely want to be back. Kieran McKenna, he'll want to be having a successful year. Ipswich weren't happy with their season this year, so they're going to definitely want to be back in that top six. Same with Charlton as well. We've already spoken about, about Charlton. We'll come back to that poll in just a second about Johnny Jackson leaving. But regardless of that poll, Johnny Jackson's gone. That new manager's got to come in. And the size of Charlton, the stature of Charlton, the history of Charlton, the fan base of Charlton, they want to be back in, in that top six. They want to be back in, in those playoff places. So I've already mentioned there, what, one, two, three, four, five, six potentially 7, 8, 9, 10, plus we'll be coming down at least 13, 14 teams that want to, well, maybe not for yeah, we're looking between 10 and 14, 10, 10 to 14 teams want to be finishing the top six, or not want to be, I imagine all of them do, but you know what I mean, 10 to 14 teams have a very, very good chance of in the top six and all have a good reason why they think they, they realistically could be in there based on getting relegated and, and being in this league and also based on this season's successes or even this season's failures and a, a really exciting summer ahead. So it's impossible to predict. So I am sorry I haven't really answered it properly. Um, but hopefully I've sort of done and, and sort of gone through it in, in a way that hopefully um, hopefully makes sense. Um Lots of people coming in with their thoughts now. Um, Wednesday have some cash to spend next season after a, after self-imposed transfer embargo. Yes, of course that, that's very much important as well. Of course, um, who is going up again? It, it, just into these those British shows next season will be even tougher to get promoted. Crucial final for both Sunderland and Wickham next weekend. Exactly. What's your opinions on Cheltenham this season? Very very impressed with Cheltenham this year. I think Alfie May's been brilliant. Will the Will Boyle at the back has been stunning. I think Cheltenham had a very very good year. I certainly predicted them. Um, to, to get relegated so fair play to them they've been absolutely brilliant away the lads uh, I can't wait for the next season it's going to be entertaining it's going to be very very entertaining and I've just gone through there the teams are going to be hunting for that position um, and ho- hunting for that top six I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating at the, at the minute Wednesday should be aiming for playoffs next season exactly but so should about 13 other teams um, nah. so I think that's why it's going to be so interesting Kamara of Plymouth is leaving is he? where's he going? is that I don't believe he, was he not on loan? Um, I didn't think he was on loan um is his contract up? Is he going somewhere else? I'm just trying to look that up now. Um, when do you think the new kits will be released? Um, I don't know. When the, I mean, every club will do it differently, won't they? I, I imagine a few weeks before the start of the season, maybe a month before the start of the season. What's your opinion on Alex Neal? Um, okay, yeah, they have put him up for sale. Kamara is leaving the football club. Let's have a read of that. Uh, what's your opinion on Alex Neal? Very, very good manager. I think he's done very, very well. Did well at Preston. Um, did well at... The other club he was at, I've completely gone mind blank. Preston, and he was somewhere else. Where was he? Um, it wasn't Millwall, was it? It was Preston and someone else. Uh, and I was very, very impressed with, with with Alex Neal. I thought he's dealt with the playoffs really, really well. I think what, since he's come in at Sutherland, I think he's done a fantastic job. 
Um, I think he's come into a Sunderland side that certainly needed work done, even though they were in a good position. It was not an easy job to come into. Sunderland is never an easy job to come into. By the way, we've got 300 people watching right now. We've got 43 likes. So if you're one of those people that are watching right now and have not left a like, please hit that like button. We should get up to about 50 likes if you can all leave a like right now. It's free to do so. Hit that thumbs up button. It really would mean the world. Subscribe if you're new as well. Lots of content coming your way. I'm loving the interaction. A really, really good episode. Yeah, Kamara is up for sale. Um... Uh, refusing to sign a new contract next season after Brunel's taken an option uh, next year. So they've taken an option. So he's not looking to extend his contract and they've, they've um, and uh, they're gonna, they've extended the next year. Extended talks have been ongoing for a number of months regarding a significantly improved deal for um, Kamara, but talks have now ended with the 25-year-old's representatives confirming that Kamara will not be signing a new deal. With the midfielder entering the final year of his existing contract and showing no intention of agreeing new terms, the club will now speak to, facil- to fac- now move to facilitate a move for Kamara in line for our transfer strategy. Basically, what's happened there is Kamara's out of contract originally at the end of this season. However, they had an option to extend it, and they've now only extended that contract because they can now get some money for him. So they have got to sell him because he's not um, <laughs> because he's not uh, signing a new contract. Essentially, that's what's happened there. Interesting, and I certainly think, by the way, sometimes that can happen, and sometimes clubs do that and they extend that extra year to get some, obviously, you know, to be able to sell it on a permanent deal, um, and then. Obviously, maybe if they haven't had a very good year, then the clubs can't come in for them and sort of getting a bit of a stalemate. It, the way that Kamara has been this season, I think there'll be no fear of him not getting, um, uh, yeah, no fear of him uh, not not attracting any attention. Uh, Barry Banning is overrated. Uh, interesting. When is the start of the season? August. Norwich. Norwich. I don't. I don't agree that, mate. Which do you don't agree with? I do apologise. Um, Nat, who don't you agree with? Um, Alex Neal was at Norwich. Well, that was it. Norwich. It was Norwich, wasn't it? Uh, Derby County going back up. Takeover permitted. But I think if that takeover comes in, I think they've got a very, very good chance. 320 viewers right now. Absolutely. We have got 320 viewers. Which means if you haven't left a like and haven't subscribed, please do both of those things. Bolton only lost four matches second half of the season, so should be up there next year. Exactly. Um, who's the best manager in the league? Oh, that's a question. That's a question for you. Who's the best manager in the league? Um, when we get to 55 likes, I'll tell you. Um, but in the meantime, um, I want to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, who do you think is the, be- is the best manager in the league? Fifty-five likes, and I will, um, and I'll give you my thoughts on that. And that isn't mainly just because I want to get more likes. It's mainly because I haven't really thought about it yet, and I want to buy some time to think about it. Any opinion on that, Wickham chairman? I saw the quote. I saw what he said about Sunderland. I mean, I'm not a Sunderland fan. I'm going to be honest. I find it quite funny. Um, I, I think he was just sort of. Um, I think he was just taking the mick, really. So, uh, yeah, um, but uh, yeah, for me, I, I thought it was just, I think it's just a, I think it was just quite funny, but I understand it can be a bit frustrating and, and he can take the mick a little bit. Uh, do you want also to pull up, uh, pull, put all their focus on getting promoted or try to get some success on winning some cups, promotion, speed promotion, because what other cup are we going to win? We're not going to win the FA Cup, we're not going to win the Carabao Cup, we might win the Papa John's Trophy, but can someone say to me, Papa John's Trophy or promotion? I know exactly what I'm taking. What do you think of Mike? No, very clever, very clever, Robert. I just stopped myself there. Uh, thoughts on Jack uh, Irondale to bolt on a free? Uh, I don't know much about him, mate. I don't know much about him. I'll have to look at that up. Uh, Wickham chairman is terrified. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Bolton with 47 points in the last 22 games um, of the season and will be strengthening again. Exactly. I think Bolton are in a very, very good position. Uh, sorry, sorry, the Barry Banning comment being overrated. Okay. Interesting. Um, it's a very, very good year. I don't think he is overrated. I think he's he's fairly rated to the sort of degree he should be. Wayne Rooney, best manager. Oh, I thought we were talking about managers currently. Okay, yeah. I mean, and technically, Derby are in League One. But if we're looking at this season, um, this season, who's been the best manager this season? I think we haven't hit 55 likes yet. So four more people like, and I'll give my thoughts. But I now know who it is. Just got to get four more likes. I'll tell you who I think it is. I don't understand why the Wickham owner would do that because he knows that uh, that could fire up players and make Alex Neal teams look easy for him. Yeah, I understand what you mean, Clayton. I understand what you mean. I think it, I think it's funny, but I also think as well, I think you're right. And I also think, I, I personally, I, I think it's funny, but I'd also be annoyed if my chairman did it because it's, you know, it's almost like you're like, oh, don't do that. You know what I mean? It's like, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of those. It's like, oh god, no, that's embarrassing. I don't think I'd want that because if you lose, everyone's gonna just you know quote it up, and you're gonna just see people 
basically, you know, you just see Sunderland fans on Twitter laughing about it. So, you know, what's the point? For me, I don't think he get what he gets out of it. Uh, I guess he gets out of it, he gets the, the laugh, the fun about it. I understand he's trying to play on the Wickham underdog's mentality, and I guess they are an underdog going into the game. But they're underdog in terms of size of the football club and in terms of size of fan base and all that sort of thing. But in terms of chance of winning... They certainly are up there, you know. You know, it's not. They have a very, very good chance of winning as well. So it's bizarre, really, really bizarre, really, really quite strange. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be a little bit like embarrassed more than anything. Um, Wickham are just tin pot, <laughs> right? I, yeah, I mean, they're doing all right, uh, almost. Uh, Rooney is only thirty six, get fitter, and maybe could play a manager. I think he's already been playing manager for Derby. I don't think he's looking, uh, looking to get back to it. But uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I don't, I don't know if he's in good shape or not. Um, uh, opinions on Elliot Embleton. Very, very good player for Sunderland this season. Very, very impressed with him. Um, I think he's had a very, very good year. Uh, doesn't always work like that, I'm afraid. Look at the 220, uh, two, 221 calendar year table. Sunderland, 98 points doing it, though, uh, doing it through a season is different kettle. It is, it is. Do you think Sheffield Wednesday will have the best form at home again? Um That's almost unpredictable. <laughs> it's almost unpredictable. Um... They've got a very, very good fan base. They've got a very, very good stadium. Um, so th- there's a chance. There is certainly a chance. But again, a, a lot of other clubs, you've got you know, Barnsley, Peterborough, Derby, massive football club going down to League One. Uh, Clayton Lummerson says, uh, remember the last time Wickham was all saying things that, uh, saying this, our house thing, the next game, we played them, we destroyed them. I don't think Alex Neil losing right now after their unbeaten streak. I think it's a very high chance that we go up. Interesting. Right, we'll just hit 55 likes. Who do I think is the best manager in the league? Um... I'm going with the Wigan manager, Liam Richardson. And the reason behind that, I think he's had an amazing job in terms of taking Wigan to a title. But not just that. I think what he did with Charlie Wyke at the start of the year, um, he saved his life, didn't he? He saved his life. Um, He had that cardiac arrest on the training ground and he did CPR, I think it was, wasn't it? Saved his life, I think. Um, Sometimes you've got to look at at both stories and you've got to look at both... Both angles of it. I think he's done an amazing job winning the league of Wigan. I think where they were last season and what he's done to take them from where they were last year, you know, fighting for relegation, only just staying up and then now winning them the league. And off the field stuff as well, you know, saving someone's life, or saying a player's life, that isn't something you can just, you know, uh, I think disregard. Um, I think he's had a brilliant, brilliant season. I think Wigan had a brilliant season. For me, Liam Richardson would be my manager of the year. But lots of shouts, lots of shouts. I think Alex Neal, even though he's been only here, what, half a year, if that, I think he certainly could, uh, he's, he's certain, I think he'll probably be seen as the player manager of the year if Sunderland fans, if, if they get if they get promoted. So yeah, that, that's what I do. But let me know who you think your manager of the year is in the comments down below. Right, the poll results are in. Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? 29% of you said yes. 71% of you said no. So a clear, very clear favourite. Um, should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? A lot of people saying no. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Johnny Jackson apparently, un- apparently, uh, yeah, unfairly treated uh, by Charlton. It should not have been a sack. For me, I didn't give really, give, didn't really give my thoughts on it. Um, I'd have to probably. Uh, I think it was. I was surprised by it because I think Johnny Jackson came in very, very good honeymoon period. Definitely then not good enough. But surely to give him the summer. Surely you'd give him the summer. For me, you've got to give someone like Johnny Jackson the summer. I think it'd be really, really bizarre not to. Um, so I was surprised they didn't give him the summer um, because I think personally he deserved the summer. Um, I think someone like that, you, you've probably got to give him that opportunity. I think he certainly had a. Re- I think he certainly um, wasn't. You know, it, it wasn't great after that. Um, Sorry, I'm trying to have lost my mind there. Yeah, I don't think it. Sorry, I don't think it was great after Onion period at all. They definitely weren't good enough, and you know the end of the season and where they finished wasn't good enough. But I think you've got to give him. I think you've got to give him the summer. You've got to give him that opportunity. It doesn't work out 10, 10 15 games in the next season, and you still maybe look at January, maybe before January, November sort of time, uh, and and you're not where you want to be again. You, you know, mid table, maybe you know bottom bottom half of the table. Then you make that sort of decision. But for me, you've got to, you've got to give him the summer. I'm not, um, but yeah, I understand Charlton fans have their opinions on it, but that's just mine. I'm not a Southern fan, but Wickham doesn't deserve to get promoted this season until they get some seats in their away stand. <laughs> Can you imagine if the uh, league was uh, performed by uh, seats in away ends? Signing of the season. Who's the signing of the season? It's got to be Scott Twine from Swindon. It's got to be Scott Twine from Swindon. I think he joined in the summer, if I'm not wrong, so it's got to be him. Um, Ian Everett, two promotions in a very short managerial career. Uh, uh, 
could have easily done, uh, gone down to back to this, gone back to back this season um, if it wasn't for injuries and a, and a rampant COVID period. Interesting. I think Inever has had a very good season. I think Bolton have had a very very good season as well. So uh, I can understand that. Um, I think there's been a uh, there's certainly a good candidate for that. Um, how often has the playoff final between fifth and sixth? Um, does uh, anyone know? I don't know. I'm sure someone will. 45 people of you voted, and it was clear to say 28% said yes, 71% no. Should Johnny Jackson have been sacked? The answer was no, 71%. That's what you people voted. 45 people got involved in that vote. Um, so, yeah, let's get another vote. So I like doing these votes. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. I want to ask you. What, actually, in fact, you choose the poll. You choose the poll. You choose the poll because... Uh, it's your stream. You dictate the episode of the podcast. This one. This is your podcast, where you can decide where we go with it. It's a bit of a question, open, you know, question and an answer session. Talking about League One, we had lots of interesting discussions. Um, what else have we got on my list here? We spoke about the Charlton sacking of Johnny Jackson. We spoke about uh, well, we touched on Fleetwood appointing Scott Brown. I think him being a head coach, he did sort of mention that. I think that's a very, very interesting appointment. Um, I really do. I think he's bringing quite a young coaching staff with him as well. Um, Liam Manning linked heavily with QPR. I think we've touched on that. I think if if Liam Manning leaves QPR, uh, sorry, uh, Liam Manning, sorry, leaves MK Dons, whether that's for QPR or, or what, I think he's got a lot of interest with him. That could be really quite detrimental. Uh, Player of the year and the Wigan and Robin success. I think well, I think Wigan and Robin have been absolutely brilliant. I think that's fair to say. Um, are we going to get some vlogs next season? Um, it depends in which format. You, you think you're talking about vlogs. Um, if you do, it will probably be the same as last year um, because, obviously, oh, Aidan Kidder, who do you think will win the playoffs? That's a very, very good poll. Should have thought that myself, shouldn't I? Brilliant poll. Um, yeah, so it probably, I mean, it's going to be a little bit different next year, but again, I'll, do, I'll sort of do my um, sort of thoughts on that sort of start of next season. I sort of discussed, the, discussed this season. I think it's been very, very good. Um from a personal perspective, when we talk about the podcast, um, but yeah, the, the 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 vlogs, it won't be a vlog as such as normally, but we've done sort of match day experience this year, and I've thoroughly doing that, thoroughly enjoyed doing that. Um, so, if there is any next year, which I imagine there will be, uh, it will be in that format. Who will win the playoff final? Sunderland or Wickham? Ask your community. Who will win the playoff final, Sunderland or Wickham? There we go. That poll is up for you to vote on right now. Who will win the playoff final, Sunderland against Wickham? Get your votes in right now. Please remember, if you're a Sunderland fan, don't just vote Sunderland if you don't think it is you. I imagine, though, a lot of Sunderland fans uh, will uh, think uh, it, they, they will. But, of course, uh, give uh, your thoughts in now. Honestly, maybe as a neutral as well. I'm neutral, of course, get involved. Who will win the playoff final? Right, let's go to some more of your questions. If Sunderland get promoted, which Sunderland players would you like to see? Uh, w- if Sunderland get promoted, which Sunderland players would you like to see in your side? Um, who would I like? To, who, which Sunderland players would I like in my in in Oxford United? Most of them, to be honest. Um, and but if I had to say, well, not all of them, but I, I, not all of them, obviously. But I, I take I take Ross Stewart as a striker. I think we're crying out for a striker of that quality, so I, I would go with with Ross Stewart. I think is it Bailey Wright and Baff at the back. I think he looks really, really good. Both of those players at the back look really quite good. Um, I like Matete. Actually, I think he looked really good in midfield. I like Embleton. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd go with for me. That's what I'd go with. Um, that's probably that's probably what I'd go with there. Uh, uh, how do you think we can improve this under referee in the EFL? I don't know, Callum. The problem the problem is the the problem. I think I think the issue that there is with the referees in this league. I think you've got all of the because how to define as a the, the it's bizarre. It's bizarre. What why is the standing of refereeing like it and what can be done to improve? A lot of people say introduce VAR, introduce VAR, but that doesn't always necessarily bring out. The quality in in, in in a referee, for example. So I don't know. I, I'm still in, I'm still in this position where I don't want to see VAR in League One. That's just my opinion. That is just my opinion. That might be another poll we could do maybe for the last sort of few minutes of the episode. But I personally do not want to see VAR. 
uh, in, in League One right now. In the future, maybe. But right now, I just don't want to see that. Um, which League Two players should League One clubs be targeting for transfers? You're now testing my knowledge of League Two players. Um, I'd have to come back on you on that. I wouldn't be able to give you um, too many. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, which ones you'd go for. Um, I'd say, really, if you stubbed me there, to be fair, my League Two knowledge just isn't very good, unfortunately. It wasn't good enough uh, to answer that question. Um, so I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't answer that. But I'm sure I'll, I'll get back to you when I'm about to look to look at a few. Um, Bolton, the team to beat with their depth since the January uh, signings. Bolton are massive, um, interesting. Uh, keep grinding, mate. I want to see their numbers be 10k soon. Hopefully, mate. Hopefully, the podcast growth recently has been very, very, uh, very, very exciting. So uh, yeah, hopefully we we do keep growing. Thank you very much, all of you, for your support. Oxford free, to, uh, Oxford lose free to the Bolton. Bolton two one to Oxford. Yeah, uh, I do remember that. <laughs> Uh, I was at both of those games, I think. I was at both of those games, yeah. Um, where do you see Forest Green finish next season? Well, of course, the controversy of their manager was interesting, wasn't it? Um, I think they... Mm, oh, I don't know. Because if I play like I did against like with with, with Cambridge and Cheltenham, then I'm going to say they're going to get relegated. But again, I, I don't know. I really don't know. It could easily go the other way, couldn't it? Where they could do a Cheltenham and, and Cambridge, how they did end up, and, and, and they could easily um, be comfortable. So... I don't know. That's one to sort of think about. But they are a very good side. They had a very, very good year. If you had to sign one bottom player, who would it be? Sign one bottom player, who would it be? Dapo. Or... I would like to have seen this gone for Dion Childs when he was at Accrington. Obviously, I don't think we'd, we'd obviously... Or I don't think we'd get Dapo either. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind Dion Childs. I think he's a very, very good striker. Um... Any more? Who else? Uh, I think you're, the, the midfield, you've got some really good midfielders. I think Morley's good. I wouldn't mind Santos at the back. I think he's had a really good year. Right, he's so good. Thought um, uh, thought 09 was brilliant. Yeah, I thought he was good. I thought he did have a good he did have a good game. How many Sunderland players will make the team next season if they do go up? Loan players return for me. McGeady retire. Other players have contracts up. How many Sunderland players will make the team next season if they go up? Um... I think probably quite a few, but I think there will be definitely some additions in there. Um, How are the lads? But remember, um, remember, Pete, you've got to get there first. Don't get ahead of yourself. I wouldn't want to see Bath, Wright, State, Stewart, or Emerton go, but maybe a low move for Matete. Don't think he's quite there yet if we get promoted to the championship. If he goes to the, prom- if he goes to the championship, I wouldn't mind him on loan. I think he's a really decent player to have. Um, maybe not as a, as a starter every single week, but certainly someone to grow. I think he's got real strength in, in the midfield. I like the way that he... I think the battle between him and Kamara was really, really good. I don't mind... I, I didn't mind Matete too much. He's not the best on the ball, um, but was great at keeping Bannon quiet for most of the games. Yeah. Not bloody Patrick Bra- ba- uh, Roberts, lol. No, I completely forgot about Patrick Roberts. Maybe someone that could go in there. Um, at Nat, do you cry when Roberts? Did you cry when Norris, uh, when Roberts scored? <laughs> you must hate Patrick Roberts. I think VAR would be so good because referees are so poor. Um, maybe would VAR stop referees? Or well, sorry, would they improve referees? I, I don't know. It's, it's difficult to say. Just join. What is a playoff final prediction? Oh God. Now you're testing me. I will be doing, of course, my prediction episode. So, um, if I'm... Oh, God, I don't want to spoil it too much because obviously I will be doing an episode of the podcast on it, um, a dedicated episode sort of talking about it all. Um, who do I think will be in the playoff final? Here's a question for you. Will you all hate me if I say I'm not going to give you my ultimate prediction? But I will tell you that a lot of people are saying Sunderland. Sunderland are the complete poll favourite. I did put in the title, didn't I? I think I did put in the title, my playoff, playoff final predictions. I don't know if I can get... I don't know. We'll keep deciding. Would you all absolutely hate me if I didn't give you a team um, to win the playoffs out of, out of Sunderland and Wickham? I can tell you, though, Wick, Sunderland is a heavy favourite on the poll we're currently doing. That's really interesting. Um, why doesn't Gareth Ainsworth take a, of a job role? Because I said it earlier, um, Michael, I think it, it, you've got to find a team that completely suits Gareth Ainsworth. He's a very, very distinctive manager, plays a distinctive style of play. Just join. What's the player prediction? Just done that one. Uh, best keeper in league this year. Um, I'd go. I'm not going to tell you that actually because I've got an episode of the podcast coming out very very soon. My team of the year. So I'm not going to give too much away. Can I get your opinions uh, on MK Dons? Had a very very good season. Unlucky, he'd say in the playoffs, um, but very very impressive season. Scott Time was brilliant. Harry Darling was brilliant. Got to keep hold of. Uh, got to keep hold of Liam Manning, your manager. I think he's a really good player. A really good manager who. He's getting a lot of interest from a lot of clubs, so it won't be easy to keep hold of him. 
Uh, not unlucky this season. Would love to see Wednesday back up, but happy Sunderland beat Hughes. <laughs> VAR in League One would seriously highlight how in, uh, inept the referees are in the league. I'd be, it would be a decision overturned constantly every game. I think you wouldn't be too far wrong there. There's been some really, really questionable decisions in League One this year from, from referees. Uh, and I think it probably would expose them a little bit. I think you're right. Alex Pritchard, masterclass incoming. Have to wait and see on that. Did look very, very good in the two semi-finals. Very, very good player. Um, I think Wickham are going to surprise Sunderland fans. I think Wickham always surprise play, uh, always surprise teams. Um, so I, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, it'll be tough for Sunderland next weekend, but they dominated both games against Wickham this season overall. Uh, yeah, you were the best team in. Uh, yeah, you were the best uh, team. Good luck in the playoffs. Anyone going to the playoff final? By the way, we've got the votes in right now. I think it's at 34 people have voted. Yeah, 34 votes. 95% of people saying Sunderland are going to beat Wickham. Heavy, heavy favourites. I'm going to be honest, it probably a little bit to do with the fact we've probably got, got a few more Sunderland fans uh, in the live chat. We have Wickham fans. Um, but as a neutral, I can see why Sunderland are the favourites, but you cannot us underestimate. And this is my predictions because I did put an S on the title maybe a little bit on, on purpose. Sort of, so I don't have to give you a definite answer. My predictions for the game, Sunderland are, have got to be very, very careful of Wickham. They're 91% on here. That's confident. That's confident. I think a lot of people will be very, very surprised by how Wickham play. And, and because I just, that's the way it is. I think, I think Wickham so distinctive and so good at what they do. I said it right at the start. Talk about, is there any side better in the League One that have a way of playing that's so distinctive and so good at it? Also clear with their culture. I think Wickham are literally the example of that. Uh, are Bolton massive? Got a big fan base, mate. Very, very big fan base. Thoughts on Ipswich and the job McKenna has done so far. I think he's done a fairly good job. Um, has I think he came into a club that um, that that needs work, that needs work. Um, in, in terms of it's going to be a big summer, but you had a big summer last year. I think so far he's come in. I think he's steadied the ship a little bit. I think it's really interesting to see what he's going to have to go and do. He's a young manager, um, somebody that's a really really good, exciting manager coming through. That's definitely improving. Uh, I think Ipswich are always improving as well. So you've always got to buy into the project a little bit. But I'm excited. Uh, I, I can imagine you're excited as well. I'm excited to see what 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 McKenna can do. Um, I think he's certainly our team to watch out for next season. Uh, no, Bolton aren't. <laughs> Nat, thanks and good luck for the promotion next year. Was just unlucky this year, really. I'm going to Wembley, but it was awful trying to get tickets in the Sunderland end. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be difficult to get tickets completely, I think. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to try and scam away some tickets on the 16th when it's on general sale, but it's looking unlikely. Uh, playoff teams next year. I've already done that, mate. Uh, I didn't really give my genuine full-on because it's so hard to predict. I think I'll give you a few ones in there. I think Derby will be in there if they get a takeover. I think MK Dons might not be based, but I think that completely depends on their window. Sheffield Wednesday will be in there. Southern will be in there. Oxford hopefully are going to be in there. Bolton, big year. Ports are back on it. Charlton and Ipswich both wanted to come back after a disappointing season. So lots and lots of shouts. It's going to be so difficult. Uh, I can say Wickham are a very, very good team, but I, um, by the way, can we get to 60 likes? We've got 300, 211 people watching right now. Please hit that like button. It really would mean the world 60 likes, and that would be absolutely brilliant for a live stream. By the way, this is the record most amount of people uh, watching the live stream. Amazing, amazing stuff. I can say Wickham are a very, very good team, but as I'm an MK Dons fan, I'm kind of annoyed. But yeah, I mean, we put up a good fight in the playoffs, but not good enough. I mean, we got one goal back, though. He did do a decent shout. He did do a really decent at counting yourselves in the second leg. Um... I would say that, um, but in the end, Wickham do what Wickham do best. What are the odds of both teams? I think I can show you that. I think I can show you that. I think a sofa score. Uh, have they done their preview yet? Have they done their preview? They might not have done their preview. Hopefully, they might have done. If they do, I'll show you them. Sofa score would do their prediction. They have right. Let's go over to it now. Let's go to here. Let's go to here. Right. Let's click on that. So, I will be doing my preview, of course, for it. Um, but the odds are here. So uh, Sunderland are eleven to ten. Wickham are twelve to five. So very, very close. Um, I'm not. I'm not old enough to bet, so I can't actually tell you too much about if they're very good odds. But um, yeah, they're the odds. If you're interested, they are the odds. Um, it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be interesting what those. Uh, what, what, what that suggests. Um, yeah, but uh, they're the odds for it. Very, very tight. Very, very close. Um, 
lots and lots of uh, people giving their thoughts in right now. Um, I'm looking down here because I'm going to keep that on the screen so you can have a look, look at that while I answer some of your questions. Uh, uh, Michael Jackson, well, you're the centre of that's keeping quiet. What are the odds for both teams? There we go. You'll be able to get tickets in the Wicker Men. I don't think... I mean, I might do, but as an Oxford fan, I don't think that's uh, a very good idea. Gooch leaving for Portsmouth or not? Your vids are so entertaining, mate. Thank you very much, my friend. Clayton says, Gooch will stay. He loves us. Gooch leaving for Portsmouth. Is that a good signing for, for Portsmouth? Are some of them fans of that? You, would you be happy to see Gooch go? Interesting, by the way. 46 people have voted. Sunderland, 87%. 13% Wickham Wanderers. So Sunderland still heavy favourites. Slightly changed the odds, but still, it's definitely Sunderland edging on that vote. In a two-horse race, it's worth backing Wickham. Interesting. It's tough. It's really, really tight. Which players should be targeted from the relegated League One clubs, if any? Um, what's a tough one. Um, to be honest, can I bring it up here? Can we bring up for crew? None. I'm gonna be honest. Maybe offered. Uh, where is he? He's down here. But on here, yeah. Luke offered looked decent. Bailey says David looked all right. Mandron may be at a push, but I think you're looking at Offord or Bailey Sass Davis. I think that's an interesting one. I think sides getting relegated for Wick for Wimbledon. Um, it's tough. I think Jack Jack Rudi, uh, Jack Rudini got a, got a few people saying um, he'd be decent to, to pick up, um, and I heard a few people saying William Nightingale. But I think other than that, it's quite tough. Um, probably Jack um, Rudini for that one. For Doncaster, again, it's probably, again, not many. Um, I mean, you've got to remember as well, you're looking at a League 2, so, well, yeah, when, when you answer that question, I presume you mean any League 1 clubs looking to pick them up or anything higher, so in terms of players that can play at a League 1 level, it's not that many. I wouldn't say many at all uh, for Doncaster, only a handful, really, for, for Wimbledon. For Gillingham, maybe a few. I mean, Gillingham, if any of you watched that interview that they did, the manager did, wasn't it? I think is it Neil Harris, he did an um, interview after the game. And he basically said a lot of players will be going up for sale. And who will that be? I, I don't know. I think Verdane Oliver would be a really interesting player. And I just to say, is Verdane Oliver... Um, he's got his contract up. Because I've got a lot of people saying um, that there'll be a big overhaul at Gillingham. I think the manager himself has said that. Um, he's 30 years old. But he's a very, very good striker. And again, he had a decent year this year. Um, does that not give him a contract? That isn't the website I was thinking to go on. I want to go on Transfer Market. Here we go. Um, a lot of players that maybe could be looking to leave the club and also their contracts are up um, to leave. So, yeah, he is looking to leave the football club. His contract expires, yeah, uh, this summer. It looked like he is going to leave. So, I mean, Verdane Oliver, maybe. I think he could be someone on a free transfer. I think, you know, you look at his goals this year, nine. It's not brilliant, but, you know, you look at previous years. Is it going to show us over the last year as well? Here we go. Look, look, nine goals, 39 games. It's not brilliant, but I think in a Gillingham side, you're going to be, have to be, you could be better. I think it was last year, a much better season scoring goals. Yeah, he's got 17 goals last year, six assists. So, yeah. I think if you had to give one for Gillingham, someone leaving on a free 30 years old, you probably would go with Verdane Oliver. Um, but again, it's, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Definitely sure, uh, definitely um, someone to look at. That'd be uh, Jack Tucker as well. I think he's definitely a good shout. Um I think he's a really good centre back. I think he's definitely somebody that that, that could. I mean, look at his recent recent sober score ratings. I thought even when he lost Gilly, lost to Rotherham two 0 I thought he had a decent game. So I'm interested to see if his contract's out. Um, so yeah, I probably would go with those two. Gilling, I think Gilling is probably a little bit easier to um to highlight. Um, why is he not coming up? That's annoying. So yeah, I think Jack Tucker and Dane Oliver. I think Dane Oliver. So we've just seen there is, is a free transfer. Uh. Jack Tucker is his contract's gonna be his contract's up as well. Doesn't say he's gonna leave though. So looks like he might be someone that again is available on a, on a I mean it looks like Dan Oliver's already said he's not signing a new contract, but with Jack Tucker doesn't say he's necessarily leaving. Uh but I think he'd be a good centre back. Oh, I felt him. Uh I think yeah, that could be a could be a decent shout there. Um but yeah, that's the answer to that question. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. Um a few names in there. But again, it's not easy. There's not too many, if I'm being totally honest. Um, let's switch back. One, that's the Oxford United Burton live stream. It's not the, quite one we're looking at. Right then, any more people getting their thoughts in? Um, got lots of people giving. Lots of people now. Fifty-four people, by the way, have got their thoughts in now for the playoff final. Slightly more, slightly closer. Eighty-seven percent of people giving their thoughts now as well. Can you see Akin Fenwell getting a run out? 
Uh, if they win in four or five nil, maybe. Wickham only uh, have I gone too far? Wickham only plays on a small ground, but Sunderland loves the big boy grounds. Wembley Stadium is certainly a big boy ground. I think we'll stay. Uh, I think we'll stay, but just have to see if, if signs a new contract or not. Um, oh, that's Gooch. Oh, is that Gooch you're talking about? Sunderland fans, which area should improve if you go up and hopefully see? Uh, hopefully, hope will far. Hope. Sorry, I cannot read. If you go up and hope, will you fare in the champ? How will you fare in the championship? That's what to say. Uh, Sean Harding, Sunderland sold out 37 uh, before general sale, 37,000 general sale. I don't think it's looking great for any tickets there. Gooch just had a really tough season, but has a fantastic last month, so I did hope he stays, but it all depends on if Neil offers him a new contract. No, uh, not hope, sorry. Forest all, for, Forest all over Sheffield at the moment. Uh, that's the championship player she's talking about. I think Wickham will collapse under the, under, the, uh, under the pressure of performing in such a large stadium, and so many fans Sunderland have played those types of games a lot. Robert, I'd slightly disagree with that, because Wickham... I understand maybe because I mean, we can play in the championship more recently than Sunderland. But I, what I'd also say to that as well, we can play at Wembley two years ago um, and won against Oxford. But I guess, I guess what I mean, there was no fans there. So maybe that's what you're trying to say. Um, but maybe, you know, Sunderland definitely more... Um, used to playing it with bigger crowds. Um, I guess last time Wickham played at Wembley, there there wasn't a crowd, but they have played at Wembley before. They've played in these sort of high-pressure games before. They played in the Championship more recently. Um, I don't know. It's tough. Thoughts about the links of Gorin leaving? I don't want to see it happen, Jacob. I don't want to see it happen. I think if he goes to Burton or Portsmouth where he's linked to, I think there definitely could be um, a really disappointing disappointing blow for Oxford. I know he's been injured a lot this season, but or pretty much most of the season. But I think next season, I think he can stay. I think that'd be really, really helpful. I think Akinfen will play now every, everywhere because half our squad won't be there next season. Most of our squad is there on loan or out of contract. Um, Wickham are built are built for playoffs. They are, mate. They are built for playoffs. They play such a unique style of play that works so well in those big moments. Uh, I could see us keeping the majority of players if we go up either by renewing contracts or either another loan deal. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunderland will have 44,000, Sunderland 19,000. That is just the size difference of the clubs, Sean Harding. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That has been an amazing episode of the podcast. We've broken so many records today. We've got most likes on a live stream, I think. The person, I don't mean Guinness Bowl records. I'm talking my own records in terms of the podcast. Uh, 100, I think we've had a, a peak of about 37, uh, sorry, 300 and something uh, people watching. I think that's absolutely incredible. Um, you know, I've never had this many people on a live stream before. So thank you so, so much. By the way, I don't get to say it enough. Thank you so much for the recent support on the podcast. You know, the podcast has grown so much recently. Um, you know, we've come such a long way, you know, to think I'm doing a live stream at the end of the year, getting 150 odd people watching now, but the peak of 300 people watching at one time, it's remarkable, um, you know, to be doing votes of, you know, 60 or people getting involved in the votes, you know, it's remarkable. And that just shows that, that sort of how far we've come this year. And I say we, I use that inclusive um, we, because, it, it, you know, we, we do it, you know, without you watching, it wouldn't be possible. So it's not me, it's everyone. So thank you so, so much for that. Lots of content still to come. We've got, uh, of course, my uh, League One um, playoff final prediction preview. We've got my team of the season. I've already recorded that, but I need to edit that. So that'll be really interesting to see. So, yeah, we've got the playoff um, the playoff final, got team of the season. We've got uh, some awards. I want to do some awards as well. I'm doing my League One uh, end of season awards. Um so, yeah, progress is clear to see, lad. Well done. Thank you so, so much, Jacob. Thank you all so, so much. People are getting involved today. If you've just left one comment, maybe you haven't even left a com comment, but maybe you've just uh, just got involved uh, or just by watching, by leaving a like, whatever you've done today, absolutely every single one of you is appreciated. LW is an excellent stream, mate. Thank you so, so much. I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it as well. Of course, the FA Cup final um, uh, this afternoon in 45 minutes. I look forward to watching that. Now, hopefully you enjoy the rest of your weekend afternoon. I've been Jack. This has been the Unfound Podcast. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next couple of days for a new episode of the podcast. Thank you very much again. I'll see you all very, very soon. Did a bit.